Hello there everybody and welcome to part 7 of going through this June 2022 uh, paper 2 by AQA. Now if you haven't already then definitely check out um, the other parts because we've gone um, through those up to question 15. So we're going to start this part on question 16. So let's go through it. Two particles P and Q move in the same horizontal plane. Particle P is initially at rest at the point where positional uh, with positional vector negative 4i plus 5j meters it moves with constant acceleration 3i uh, take away 4j meters per second squared particle q moves in a straight line passing through the points with positional vectors i take away j and 10i uh, plus cj p and q are moving on parallel paths show that c is equal to negative 13. Okay, first thing to note that probably the most important note in this whole question is the idea that P and Q are moving parallel to each other. If they're moving parallel to each other, right, that must mean that their accelerations, one of them is a multiple of the other, or they might actually have the same. But basically, because we are told that one of them has this acceleration, then this must have some kind of multiple of that acceleration so one thing we can actually work out is well basically what is the gradient almost between these two positional points here because we know the q moves through both of these so i'm going to write them as column vectors because i think column vectors are, are easier than um, i and j notation so i'm going to write this as a column vector one negative one because it's i and then minus one j and the other one I'm going to write as 10 um, C, like this. Now, if I want to find the difference between these two, I'm going to subtract them. So I get 9 and then C plus 1, because subtracting a negative is the same as addition. What does this tell me then? Well, this tells me that the almost like the, the difference between the two points, or almost the gradient as such, but, but not quite. But what it does tell me is that for these to be parallel, these two particles to be parallel, then this particle, its acceleration must be a multiple of this, because otherwise they wouldn't be travelling parallel to each other, right? Because the acceleration in, in both of them must be a multiple of each other, right? So that must mean that k, some multiple that I don't know, some constant, multiplied by the acceleration of particle p3 negative 4 must equal 9 c plus 1 well you can actually get two equations from this right you get the first equation that k times 3 or 3k is equal to 9 so that's the first equation you can get from this and the second equation that you can get is that negative 4k is equal to c plus 1 well, clearly from that first equation, it can be implied that k must equal 3, because 3k is equal to 9, so k must be 3. And if I know that k is 3, then I can just sub into the second equation. So I get negative 4 times 3 is equal to c plus 1. So negative 12 is equal to c plus 1. Or in other words, by subtracting 1 from both sides, uh, c is equal to negative 13, as shown. Right, because that's exactly what they wanted. So actually, in this part of the question, you didn't need the initial um, positional vector of P. I assume that's going to come up in the next part, but it's about picking the right information for the question. I think that's one of the biggest stumbling blocks in mechanics, is that sometimes it can literally just be like a, a mess on the page of information. It's almost like they've thrown up information on the page. And actually picking out the right information for the right question because here for this question, you need this bit of info, which I assume we're going to use for the next bit. Hopefully that, that makes some kind of sense. The key part here is the realisation that working out the difference between the positional points implies that your acceleration, because they are parallel, they must be a multiple of each other. It's similar to the idea of, you know, you could have a, a line that's like this length, or you could have a line that this that's this length. You know, we would still say that they're parallel lines, but this might be three times longer than this one, or it might be two and a half times longer than this one. But it's a multiple of that, right? but they're still parallel. So that's the idea behind this. That's where this K comes from, the idea that it's a multiple of 
not equal to, which I think some students get a bit confused about. Right then, find an expression for the positional vector of p at time t. So let's just consider all the information that we know. Well, we want uh, an expression in uh, of the positional vector in terms of t. So we don't know the positional vector, we don't know t, but we're going to give it in terms of t. We do know other bits of info, though. We know that it was at rest, right, when it started, at that positional vector, and that it moves with that acceleration. Right? So this is all about particle p. Right? We're looking at p. We're not bothered about q. Well, we can use s equals ut plus a half at squared to actually um, get a, an expression t. The reason why we can use this is because it's at rest initially. So u is equal to 0. So this part is going to cancel. So all we're going to be left with is s equals a half at squared. Now, here, the, it can be traditional to give um, the positional vector as, as s, uh, sorry, as r instead of s. But I'm going to keep it as s. I don't think it really matters. So s is equal to a half times the acceleration, which I'm going to write as, as a, a column vector. Um, the acceleration was 3, negative 4. 3, negative 4, t squared. Now, this isn't actually finished. A lot of students will just say, right, done. And it was it was great notice spotting that u is equal to 0. However, there's something massively missing here. The displacement is taken from um from the original um position uh, from the from the uh, zero zero point so that means if our if our equation is working from basically the the origin we actually have to add on the positional vector that the particle starts at right which is where this other piece of information here that we didn't end up using earlier is going to go because we know it starts at that position it doesn't start at the origin it starts at negative four five so we actually need to add that on to the start uh, negative four five because otherwise this equation is assuming that it's going to start at zero zero and it doesn't it already has a positional start which is why we have to add it on it's like we've shifted it to that position to start with and then the equation takes it from there and uh, over time will change its position but it's that key little bit there, so sneaky, so sly, and yet lots of students will, will, will miss that one out. So let's uh, move on to the next one then. Hence prove that the paths of P and Q are not collinear. So because it said hence, I've uh, copied over the um, equation from the previous page, which took me way more time than I would uh, than what I care to admit. Now, to prove something, basically collinear means they run on the same line, right? And remember, this is the um, positional uh, equation in terms of t for p. However, if p and q are collinear, which is what we're trying to prove, then we should be able to sub in a positional vector from q in, in place of s. And we should get a t value that, that works. Right, if they are collinear, that is a way of showing it because they should run on the same line. It doesn't matter if they are collinear, whether it's a positional vector from P or a positional vector from Q because they're running on the same line. So let's sub in a, a positional vector from Q then. So let's scroll back up and pick one because they gave us two. So let's choose the first one, one negative one. So one negative one is equal to negative 4, 5, plus a half, 3, take away 4, t squared. So we get one equation, which is 1 is equal to negative 4, plus 3 over 2, t squared. And the other equation, by reading the, the j components, is we get negative 1 is equal to 5 plus uh, negative 2, t squared. So we can do a little bit of rearrangement on that first one. And by adding 5 to both sides, we get 5 is equal to 3 over 2t squared times it by 2 and divided by 3. So we get 
uh, 10 over 3 is equal to t squared. So t is equal to um, the square root of 10 over 3. Now, technically, it's equal to plus or minus the square root of 10 over 3. But because we're talking in uh, time, time can't be negative. So we take the positive value, even though it's a quadratic. So you always got to link back to that context. I talk about context a lot in these videos. Um, the second one, then, you get negative 1 is equal to 5 minus 2t squared. Bringing that across and that across, you get 2t squared is equal to 6. So t squared is equal to 3. So t is equal to the square root of 3. Now, the square root of 10 over 3 is not equal to the square root of 3. Um, they're definitely different. So there is no consistent uh, t value. So p and q are not collinear. So the basic idea is that if if it mattered, then you you would be able to sub in. Uh, sorry, if they were collinear, you would be able to sub in a positional coordinate for q in that expression we had for p, and you should be able to find a consistent t value. Whereas in in this one we don't, so they're just not collinear, which is what he asked us to show show that they're not collinear. So I'm just going to put as shown. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it there for this part. Um, hopefully, um, this video has been a nice little change. I've updated the uh, webcam, so hopefully you can see my wonderful face in much higher resolution, which is obviously what everyone was um, asking for um, when when I do these videos. Um, but anyway, I hope um, this video has been informative for you. I hope it's been uh, interesting for you. If there's any questions, then please feel free to um, drop them below. Um, like I said, it's, I try and do this all in one take. So if there's a couple of uh, slight inaccuracies through through my wording or, or whatever, then drop them in the comments below as well. I mean, I, I'm more than happy to have a correction in there and maybe I can go back and, and edit it or, or whatever. So, But all I want to say is thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.